So, it snowed a little since we last chatted. But luckily for us, our Inder Garden is warm, comfortable, and ready to be filled with plants. In the last episode, we discussed how we like to start seeds here in our basement. Since then, our seeds have sprouted, and it's time for them to move into our next medium of choice. First, let's discuss the options. As they are now, these little seedlings can go in any style of medium we choose. Hydroponics, soilless medium, or organic soil. The direction you take is a matter of personal choice, and the truth is a seasoned grower can have success with any of these options. We've learned over the years, and in our experience talking to many, many gardeners, that generally new growers like to and should start in soil. They'll get a few successful harvests in, they'll get curious about hydroponics, and they'll invest in some hydroponic system that they'll either love or hate. From there, the grower will begin to settle on a system that is right for them, and that fits both their lifestyle and personal preferences. Soil is in fact a great medium to start in. In the beginning, I recommend just getting a good bag of quality potting soil from your local hydroponics store and not reusing the soil in different batches, but simply taking the spent soil to your outdoor garden. The only issue with reusing soil is that you have to re-amend it with organic inputs to keep it fertile, and that can be difficult for beginners to estimate. Typically, professional organic gardeners do regular soil testing to determine the type and amount of fertilizer needed. However, the most important thing about growing in soil is learning exactly how to water. I know this sounds simple, but knowing when to water and truly understanding what overwatering means can make or break any soil-based garden. It's even been written that in ancient China and Japan, in order to become a bonsai master, the apprentice would be required to spend the entire first year doing nothing but learning the art of watering. Next, let's talk about hydroponics. If you're into tinkering and optimizing and tuning up that proverbial sports car for maximum performance, then hydro is for you. And yes, you will get faster growth in a hydroponic system than you will get in soil. However, that speed can come at a cost. Catastrophic failure happens more often in hydroponic gardens. Pump failure, floods, power outages, pathogenic fungi, these can all kill your plants and are all far more likely in a hydroponic system. And finally, this takes us to our preferred method of growing, and that would be a soilless medium. It's kind of like hydroponics without so much hassle. The two main types being cocoa core and peat. You will hear growers on both sides of the debate as to which is better, but we find this to be a gray area. Peat is very clean, and it's also an easy product to find generally. However, a major downfall that comes with peat is it's hydrophobic, meaning that when it dries out, it wants to stay that way. Cocoa, on the other hand, absorbs water quite well and will move water around the pot, creating a much better consistency within the medium. However, cocoa can be considered dirty because it is both salty and can carry fungus gnat larva. Think of soilless medium as sort of a happy medium between soil and hydroponics, seeming to enjoy the advantages of both. For this grow, we were basically forced to use pure cocoa, because in our area during the winter time, it's pretty much hard to find any growing medium. However, cocoa comes conveniently compressed in cubes and can be easily delivered by Amazon. Now that we've chosen a medium, let's choose a container. Like soil, when growing in cocoa or a soilless medium, it's a good idea to step up in container size and not to just go straight from a small peat plug into a large container. So we're going with a classic, the Red Solo Cup. Red Solo Cup. We like using these because they're cheap, reusable, and the perfect size for our next stage of growth. Just take some scissors, cut a few holes in the bottom, and you're good to go. Next, I'll hydrate the cocoa with water that I've already added fertilizer to, and repot these plants. We'll be making a video specifically on fertilizer, so hit that subscribe button to be notified. At this point, I'll set these kiddos in the tent, set the timer for about 16 to 18 hours of light, and allow them to sit for about two weeks until they'll need to be repotted again. Besides the light, the only other critical item that we will need in this tent is a couple of fans for air circulation. As air passes over the surface of the leaf, evaporation occurs from the moisture on the leaf's surface. This evaporation is also known as transpiration in the plant world, and what that does is it creates a negative pressure within the plant and sucks the water up through the roots. That's what allows the plant to drink. Uh, in other words, without wind, the plant can't eat or drink. We noticed it was a bit chilly in this tent, so we took a small space heater and we connected it to this thermostat that came originally with a heating mat. You can see on the back of this thermostat that it allows up to 1000 watts. In checking the back of the heater, 
we see that this heater only uses 750 watts, meaning everything's good here. We'll set the temperature somewhere between 70 and 80 degrees, and we'll just let it ride. We'll be ending this video here, but our conversation can continue down in the comments. If you have any questions, write it down there and I'll get back to you. But until then, never stop growing.